Now, many of you here tonight will know that Cain and Abel and Hampstead Heath are Cockney rhyming slang. <laughs> Cain and Abel means table and Hampstead Heath means teeth. We are glad to welcome tonight a large group of Cockney worshippers to Evensong and it is to them that I wish to address my sermon. <laughs> I want to tell you a story. A long time ago, in the days of the Israelites, there lived a poor man. He had no trouble and strife. <laughs> she had run off with a tea leaf some years before. <laughs> and he now lived with his eldest bricks and mortar, Mary. <laughs> and being very short of bees and honey, un unable to pay the burden on Trent, he was tempted to go forth into the Bristol city <laughs> and see what he could half inch. <laughs> would say to Mary, his bricks and mortar, I will take a ball of chalk into the town and buy some tobacco for my cherry ripe. <laughs> and he would put on his almond rocks and his dicky dirt <laughs> and his round the houses and set off down the frog and toad until he reached the outskirts of the Bristol. <laughs> and people would stare at him for his dicky dirt was torn. <laughs> his howdy-do's were full of holes. <laughs> And his coat was very Westminster Abbey. <laughs> he was also somewhat unclean, being too poor to purchase any cape of good hope. His bushel and peck was extremely 2.30. <laughs> and people passed by on the other side to avoid the pen and ink. <laughs> he was truly an ugly man. His north and south drooped. His mince pies were watery. <laughs> And he had a big red, I suppose. <laughs> One day, his bricks and mortar gave him some money, saying, here is a saucepan lid. Go and buy food, a loaf of Uncle Fred, and a pound of standard ease. <laughs> but do not tarry in the town, and bring me back what is left of the money to buy myself some new underwear. I need a new pair of early doors. <laughs> For my present ones are full of holes, and I am in a continual George raft. <laughs> But instead of returning with the bees and honey for his bricks and mortars early doors, he made his way to the rubber dub for a tumble down the sink <laughs> and indulged himself freely on the bottle. And he became very elephant's trunk and Mozart. <laughs> and when the landlord of the rubber dub called Bird Lime, the man set off back towards his cat and mouse, reeling about all over the frog and toad and drunkenly humming a stewed prune. <laughs> And it came to Khyber Pass <laughs> that as he staggered along, he saw on the pavement a small brown Richard III. <laughs> <laughs> and he stared at it, lying there at his plates of meat. <laughs> and he said, oh, small brown Richard III, how lucky I did not step on you. <laughs> And he picked it up <laughs> and he put it on top of a wall where no one could step on it. <laughs> and a rich four by two ish merchant <laughs> who witnessed the deed put his hand into his skyrocket and took out a lady Godiva and handed it to the man saying, I saw you pick up that Richard III <laughs> and remove it from the pavement, and that was a kindly act. Take this lady Godiva for your froth and bubble. <laughs> and the man took it and went on his way. And the Richard III flew back to its nest. <laughs> now, when the man arrived home, his daughter was sitting by the Jeremiah on her favorite Lionel Blair. <laughs> and she arose angrily and said, once again you come home, elephants, trunk, and Mozart. You have spent all the money I gave you. Now I cannot have my new pair of early doors. Neither can I have wine, as you do. And the man said, fear not, here is a Lady Godiva, which I earned by a kindly act. And the woman was overjoyed and said, thank you, Father. Now I can have my pair of early doors. Verily, that kindly act has ensured that I have more than enough to cover my bottle and glass. 